So in every video, we've been physically consoling into the Switch with this console cable. However, in the real world, there's one big disadvantage to this. You have to be physically next to the Switch to configure it. And nobody has the time to be running around the whole building just to change a VLAN, especially in an enterprise network where you might have hundreds or even thousands of switches to manage. In real networks, everything is done remotely and this is where SSH comes in. So what is SSH? It's a secure protocol that allows a user to remotely connect to a device's CLI over the network. You might have also heard of the protocol Telnet. Telnet is like the insecure predecessor of SSH. It also allows you to access your device over the network, but all the traffic that's sent between the device and your computer is in plain text. So it's not encrypted unlike SSH. So we're gonna be using the real switches today, but I just wanna show you guys the topology on Packet Tracer just to give you an idea of what we're gonna be doing. So this is gonna be the topology. So our goal is to make PC1 SSH into Switch 2. We're gonna have two VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 99. VLAN 10 is going to be the VLAN that our PC is gonna be in, and VLAN 99 is going to be the management VLAN. Between switch one and switch two, we're gonna make a trunk that allows both of these VLANs, and we're gonna configure switch two to accept SSH connections. So using our topology as a guide, this is going to be switch one, and this is going to be switch two. So first let's connect switch one and switch two. We're gonna use the last port, port 48 on both switches to connect them together. And then we're gonna use switch one and connect switch one to our PC. Okay, there, connected it to our PC. And now to configure our switch, we first have to console into it. Let's console into switch one first. Now let's go back to our PC. Okay, so now that we have the console connection, let's open PuTTY and let's open up device manager. Pretty sure it's COM5, it's been COM5. It's always COM5, but let's just check anyways. It's COM5. We're gonna leave the speed as is. And now, yep, we're in the switch. Whenever we configure a new switch, what's the first thing we always do? It's always configure a host name. So this is switch one. And after configuring the host name, let's configure a password. Enable secret epic password. And then now let's create the VLANs, our two VLANs. First, let's create VLAN 10. Let's name it IT. And now let's create VLAN 99 and name it manage. Mint. So now since we've connected port 1 on the switch to our Windows laptop, let's configure port 1 on the switch to be VLAN 10 access port. G101, um, switch port mode access, switch, switch port access VLAN 10. So this is some basic stuff that we've learned already before. Now let's configure the trunk between switch one and switch two. So based on our physical topology, the, the ethernet cable connecting the two switches is on port 48, int g1 slash zero slash 48. Switch port mode trunk. Oh, okay, you might see this error. This error says an interface whose trunk encapsulation is auto cannot be configured to trunk mode. This is because you have to use, first use this command. Switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q because it's probably using ISL, which is Cisco's, which is the original dot one Q basically. It's like Cisco's dot one Q. Now we can do switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10 and 99. So this is telling the switch allow VLANs 10 and 99 to pass through this interface, to pass through this trunk. So this should be everything that we need to configure on this switch. So now let's connect to the second switch. Okay, so now we're connected to, into the next switch. Let's do the basic configurations like making a host name and a password. Host name switch two, enable secret epic password. After we've configured the host name and the password, let's configure the same VLANs that we did on switch one. VLAN 99, name management. Now let's create SVIs for these VLANs. IP add 192.168.10.1 into VLAN 99. IP add 192.168.99.1.2450. So now we have SVIs for VLAN 99 and VLAN 10. The SVI for VLAN 99 this IP address right here, this is the IP address that we're going to use to SSH into this device. So just keep that in mind. And now let's configure the trunk port on this switch. So the, the trunk port is the same as the previous one. 
48, the final port on the switch. Switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. Switch port oh, trunk. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10 and 99. Okay. So, so far, we haven't done anything related to SSH yet. We've just been configuring the devices so they can communicate with each other. So before we do any SSH configurations, first, let's change the IP address of the laptop. A couple of you guys were asking me, how can I change the IP address of a host? So you just go to control panel, network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and then you'd find what adapter you want to assign the IP address to. So in our case, it's Ethernet. You guys will probably not have as many options as me. It's because I have VMware installed and then I was using a bunch of network adapters for that. But usually you might have like two or three. And the one we're going to be using today is this one, Ethernet. Oh, you want to right click, properties, and select IPv4, Internet Protocol version 4. This is obtain an IP address automatically means that it's going to try to contact DHCP we can do use the following IP address to assign an IP address statically. So this PC is going to be 192.168.10.1. Oh, .10.3. Yep, the send the mask is slash 24. And the default gateway is the SVI IP address for VLAN 10, which is .1. So if everything's right, we should be able to ping. Okay, let's turn off the firewall first because we learned that lesson from before. Okay. And now let's try to ping. Ping, let's try to ping the default gateway first. Please. Something always goes wrong whenever we try to do this, but let's see if this is the time that, oh, there we go, let's go. Now let's try to ping um, the management port, VLAN 99's SVI. There we go. So we can ping both SVIs, which means that our configuration is good. So now let's get into SSH configuration. So when you wanna configure SSH, the first step is actually to configure a host name, but we've already done that. You, will not, you won't be able to create an RSA key if you don't have a host name and a domain name. So we need to configure the domain name. We can do this by using the command IP domain name, I think. Yeah, domain name and then domain name. So I'm gonna put uh, paulo.com. Now, after we configure the domain name, we can create the RSA keys. We can do this by using the command crypto key generate RSA. And then it's asking us how big we want the key to be. We use 1024. And now it's gonna generate the RSA keys. And let's do the command IP SSH version two. We wanna use this command because we don't wanna use version one. Version one had a lot of had a lot of flaws. There's a lot of design security flaws. So that's why they created version two. They completely redesigned the protocol because of how bad the design flaws were. They couldn't even just patch it. They had to redesign it. And another thing with SSH is we have to configure a username and password. The password that we've already configured on this when we did the command enable secret epic password, that was the enable password. So you know when you log into a switch, first you're greeted with this screen where you literally really can't do much. And then you press and you type enable to enter privileged exec mode. That's the password for that. But when we want to configure SSH, we need a password for the whole switch itself. Even before we're in this mode, I forgot what it's called. I don't know if it's exec mode or something. Before we're even here, before we can type anything at all, we need a username and password. So that's what we're going to configure. It's really simple. You just do username and the username, I'll put in my name. Uh, secret and so that the password is encrypted. Use the same password. Don't use this password, it's not a good password. And the last thing we wanna do to make SSH work is we wanna configure the line VTYs. Line VTY 015. VTY lines are just virtual interfaces on the switch that allow the switch to accept virtual connections or to accept remote connections to the switch itself. So when we're doing the command line VTY 015, that means we're configuring all the VTY lines from VTY 0 to VTY 15. So like VTY 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 15. And in here, we want to configure login local. This tells the switch to authenticate users using the local username and password. So the password that we just, the username and password we just created when trying to authenticate SSH users. And the last command is transport 
input SSH. This tells the switch to only accept SSH connections because you don't want to accept Telnet connections because those are trash. Those are just plain text. You're going to get hacked instantly. Okay, so, so now that we have this device configured, let's unplug the console cable and let's see if the remote connection works. I hope it works, please. So just to prove it to you guys, let's unplug right here, unplug. So let's open up PuTTY again. But instead of going to serial, this is the serial connection though. This is the, the console cable that we've been using. Let's use SSH connection type. Let's type the IP address 192.168.99.1 port 22 for SSH, and let's see if it works. Please. Oh, the host key is not cached. Accept. Yes! Log in as Paolo. Password epic password. Boom! See, we're in just like that. We're not, we're not connected to it. We're connected to it through this data cable, which is connected to switch one, which is connected to switch two. So we're remotely accessing switch two without using any console cable. We're only using data cables for this. So this is actually super cool. Enable epic password. And now we can configure the switch just like we're physically console into it. So let's just go over all the commands that we use to enable SSH. We can do a show run. And I'm not going to save the config because I don't want to keep erasing the config and reloading the switch whenever I do a lab because it takes forever. This, these switches take forever to load up. So. To configure SSH on a device, there's five main configurations. So first is the host name. Second is the domain name. Third, third is the RSA key command. I don't know if it's gonna be on here, but you configure RSA, the crypto key generate RSA command. Fourth, you have to configure a username and password. And on top of that, you have to create an enable password. So you gotta have two like credentials basically. The fifth thing you wanna do, oh, actually there's six things. The fifth thing you wanna do is you want to enable SSH version two because version one is uh, version one sucks, and you want to configure the VTY lines to have with the commands login local, so it uses the username and password to authenticate SSH users and transport input SSH so that it only accepts SSH connections and not Telnet. If you want to see another video of mine, you can click the video that's on the screen right now. If you want to subscribe, you can click the other link that's on the video right now, and yeah. Keep letting me know what videos you guys want to see in the comments so that I can gather up ideas and I can make these videos. So see you guys next time.